I'm speaking with Ambassador Peter Galbraith, who was until recently America's top diplomat at the United Nations mission in Afghanistan. He left that post over a conflict on how to respond to that country's fraud-ridden presidential elections. And it seems that the problem that you identified when you were with the UN mission in Afghanistan, the rampant fraud in the elections and the extent to which it implicated Hamid Karzai, ever since then, things seem to have gotten worse for uh, the US's relationship with Karzai. And now he's trying to play off regional players against the US. And one detects a kind of uh, desperation. How would you assess what's happening? Well, it's been disastrous. Uh, uh, President Obama came into office uh, with a the goal of shifting America's uh, emphasis from Iraq to Afghanistan. I think that was welcomed uh, every place uh, all around the world. He he won strong support from Congress for ad- additional troops, for additional assistance. Uh, our allies all went on board, and as this great focus of attention on Afghanistan went forward. There were presidential elections in Afghanistan, and those were massively fraudulent, and the uh, people who organized and oversaw the fraud were the election commission that Hamid Karzai appointed, and he, of course, was the beneficiary. And I think your listeners need to understand the scale of the fraud. We're talking about a million phony ballots uh, out of three million cast, a third of Karzai's totals. Uh, the initial response of the UN, uh, the head of the admission, was to say that, well, we shouldn't get involved. And frankly, the Obama administration it itself didn't choose to make an issue. I think there was a general belief that Karzai would win anyhow, and we shouldn't make an issue of it. But, of course, Afghans understood full well that there was fraud and it wasn't going to be kept under wraps. Uh, it emerged. It provoked a rather lengthy political crisis in September and October, uh, which ultimately was resolved by forcing a second round. And then uh, the election commission set rules that made it clear that that wouldn't be fair. So a bill as challenger didn't participate. And so it, in the end, Karzai became president for a second term. But in circumstances where many Afghans and many internationally questioned his legitimacy. And the problem is we had a a president who had been in office for eight years. His uh, eight years in office had been characterized by corruption and ineffectiveness. Uh, I think it's unlikely to expect somebody who's been in office that long to change. And now on top of it, uh, uh, his second term, is he's obtained by fraud. And so he also is seen as illegitimate. Uh, and we have an administra- administration strategy, which is a counterinsurgency strategy. The, the key element of the counterinsurgency strategy is to have a credible local partner. There was no credible local partner, uh, and so the strategy isn't working. And then in the last week, there's been an, an additional development, which is that I, I think most diplomats in, in Kabul have always thought Karzai was a bit weird, and that weirdness has clearly erupted. Uh, uh, on April 1st, he, he said for the first time, yes, my, I, I wasn't legitimately reelected. It was a fraudulent election. But the person who, re, who got me reelected was Peter Galbraith. And uh, the reason he organized this fraud, and he did it so that he could weaken me by leaking the details of the fraud to the international media. That was a pretty strange statement. Uh, he then had a phone call with Secretary Clinton on Friday in which he said, oh, I was misunderstood, and I think there was a kind of hope that that was just an oddity. Uh, and then on the, the next day, Saturday, he met with Afghan parliamentarians, and he said, well, I might go join the Taliban. And then on Monday, he accused the United States of organizing the fraud that reelected him. So we have some, the, to sum up, uh, we have a, a, a leader who has an eight-year track record of corruption and ineffectiveness, now in office by fraud and therefore seen as illegitimate, who's acting very strangely. Well, given, uh, Ambassador Galbraith, that the White House did not support you and, and, and the UN basically chose, I suppose, access to the government and maintaining the missions rather than doing the mission's mandate, there's a bit of a precedent here, surely, with what happened with Ambassador 
Richard Holbrook, the special representative to Afghanistan and Pakistan, he apparently gave Karzai a dressing down and then he was unfairly sent to the White House doghouse for challenging Karzai with the truth. And it was only the fact that Secretary of State Clinton uh, stood up for him that he was able to uh, uh, stay in the in the game, it seems. So do you think that the White House has now come to the recognition that this is somebody that you simply can't deal with? That, that would seem to be the tenor of the comments that uh, the press spokesman Robert Gibbs made. Uh, he was asked whether Karzai was a ally, and he pointedly declined to say he was. He was asked whether the Karzai's trip for May 12th was still on, and he said yes, but we're going to be looking at the situation. I must say he he said something that was, I thought, very unwise. He said that Karzai was the democratically elected leader of Afghanistan. He isn't. He's in office by virtue of fraud, and every Afghan knows that. So uh, I I think it's not good to say things that that, uh, Afghans... Uh, do not believe is true. Uh, With regard to uh, Ambassador Holbrook, I think much of what you describe is correct, Um, although there's a very specific history of what happened, which is that um, Holbrook saw the same things that any other astute observer saw, which was uh, that the elections on the 20th of August were fraudulent. He was there then. He had what he thought was a private meeting with the head of the U.N. mission, Kaidi, on the next morning, the 21st of August, and he shared his view that the elections had been significantly fraudulent, and the only way they would be seen as fair is if there was a second round. Uh, Idi and he then had an exchange. Idi said, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't express that view further, because uh, Idi was really quite, didn't want to antagonize Karzai, and uh, and and didn't want any suggestion the elections weren't fair. And then ID, as soon as Holbrook left, called Karzai and told him that Holbrook believes that there should be a second round. And and this is what produced the acrimonious meeting between the two, nothing that Holbrook himself actually said. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and that really did have unfortunate consequences uh, that you described. Uh, it uh, but the administration, I think, made a huge mistake. He was the pre- president's representative, and the appropriate answer to somebody like Karzai is to say, no, no, you don't choose what American you talk to. He, this is my representative. If you want to talk to my to the United States, you talk to Ambassador Holbrook. Uh, 